Hello everybody and welcome to episode 12 of my tutorial series for Songs of Six. I'm Icon and in this episode we're going to focus into nobility and on the other hand we're going to manipulate a little bit the water table on our map, we're going to irrigate our farms a bit and organize our farming a bit and last but not least I want to feature a bit more city organizing today so we're 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 going to look at what we got so far and what has changed between now and the last couple of episodes what challenges await now and what kind of pitfalls you can stumble into if you're not careful so that's at least a roadmap let's see where we'll end up at the end of the episode so first things first let's talk about the nobility so you can always check out at your throne how many nobles you're Ill Ill illegal to appoint. So, as you can see here, we have 189 citizens, zero nobles, and, well, the subjects are, as far as I remember, the people that are in the, in the greater, bigger area around you. So, if you mouse over these points, so the sheriff allows me to appoint one noble, Major allows me to appoint two nobles and so on and so forth. So what the hell is it about nobles you might ask yourself. So first off you can check out your entire population table over here and you get access to pretty much everybody here in the city. So first off select somebody who would like to be your next noble and while you're looking for somebody Make sure that age-wise this person isn't too old as of yet because, you know, you don't want to appoint somebody a few days later because you forgot to uh, to check out that this person was already at the brink of his natural death. So, we haven't looked in the, into this screen yet as uh, at all. So, hello, this is your, uh, this is your citizen uh, sheet where you have access to all of the things, and here's somebody. Check out the traits of people as well, when you're looking for people for uh, nobility. And all in all, well, you can also apply different filters here, and it's really pretty much up to you how you appoint your nobles. I would personally always try to find somebody of low age with good traits, but if you're just too lazy for that or you don't care about that too much, it's just fine. Let's pick up Olivia Dredgemore and we're going to appoint her noble here. It's your lucky day. Down here you see all the things you might want to know about your citizens' well-being. There's uh, lots of different things, but none of these are too important for today. For today, we're mostly interested in this little button here. Click to elevate the subject into a position of power. So, this is making your person go noble. Every noble has a certain specialization, so you can put, uh, t appoint them to a master of fashions, the university headmaster, master builder, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of useful things, and all these things provide, as far as I understood it, citywide bonuses in regards to what you're seeing there. I am not 100% uh, sure if my understanding of nobles is complete at this point, so feel free to add in comments if I miss out important spots. It took me a, wa a whopping amount of time to find out how to freaking assign these people in the first place. <laughs> so, we're going to pick up the Master of Mines in our particular run, because I feel like we got so much stone here, let's make that our trademark move, and the Master of Mines will increase the productivity of all of our mining operations. Since I have vaguely in my mind to put up some gem and cithalon mining because we have those resources available, I'd be picking up this. Also, I'm vaguely tempted to put up some clay pits with that. Let's see about that. But as you see here, there's lots of different uh, nobility aspects that you can pick. And yeah. We're going to pick up the miner because I just decided that I'd like that. So, Master of Mines. So, that's pretty much all you have to do to assign that person a noble. And as you see here, 
we now have one person of nobility. The fun part about that is nobles give your population an immediate boost if your species cares about nobles. You always notice that by mouse overing these things, like if it has a little bit of a bar behind it, it does matter for your populace. If it's like this here, it doesn't matter for your populace, for example. Our, our dudes don't care about the, na the nativity of our people. We do care about freed slaves, though. We do like freed slaves. So there's uh, a way of gaining even some happiness in your city by freeing slaves. So, by understanding these meters better and better, you will be able to, to mitigate bumps in your happiness. So, for example, you can also wait out of the appointment of a nobleman if you don't need it until the very moment to mitigate a blow to your uh, happiness in one way. Or you can stockpile a couple of slaves somewhere and just free them when some disaster strikes and your people are close to a riot. Let's make something good happen. These things are stuff that you can work with. So our people are also getting happier because we're providing law via the guard posts that we put up the last time. One thing I think I missed mentioning when I was introducing the guard posts was their range. Or no, I did mention that. I see the spot there. So we're going to be uh, setting up new, new guard spots in the future-ish, but for now, we're well, we're well sorted. But what's also on my mind now for the city is, we now have a nobleman overseeing the mines, that's fine and dandy, but our city has grown in the last two episodes quite substantially, and we gotta be careful with our growth, so to say, because, you know, it's always a risk in growing if you don't control your growth. So what I'm trying to point out here is from time to time you really got to check out zoom out line and uh, zoom out and check out if your setup is still working out. Did you build something where you didn't want to build it? Is your rough plan of the city coming along? And most importantly we're going to check out the other needs of our city so especially at the services department the more people your city gets in the more services they will demand so we ain't got enough drinking services but don't let yourself fool you this is one of the most difficult needs to fulfill in your city by far because producing enough alcohol to keep all these people happy is quite some business. You have to get in a lot of pottery and a lot of grain to do so. But the pottery is actually the bigger problem most of the time. Ran out of odd jobbers here and we're running out of wood here. Let's change that. All in all, alcohol is a very, very difficult, fulfillable service and therefore ignore it for the most time. Here we see, actually, our people are pretty healthy, but you, your most important uh, meter is the green one at top, at the top of it. The blue ones only show how these services are distributed. I do notice that the eating services are um, going lower and lower. So this is one thing that where we could add in something quite soonish, and of course we could replace wells with baths, but that is pure luxury we don't need to do that same goes for the sleeping services sure our people would prefer more apartments but for the time being they're also quite okay with the dormitories there's another thing that i really like to do in my areas where i have people working is put up some dormitories in between so for example for our agricultural uh, district we don't need to put up any dormitories because we have flat houses right next to that it happens that our that our agricultural district and the city core are living right next to each other so therefore we don't need to put any sleeping spots in between all in all i'm very surprised about the fact that our city is quite happy and healthy but seriously whenever you have bumped up your your population by like 33 to 50 percent 
take a moment and check out if everything's still working out. Check out your food stores, uh, food, check out your other services, check out your stockpiles. This game can spiral you into doom quite brutally the moment you don't pay attention to these things and expand too rash. The cool part about Songs of Six is this game looks super easy as long as you don't slip up. Once you slip up though, well, people start dying because they kill each other, but that's another day's story. One thing is worth mentioning though, your guard posts are the first in line defending your city when a riot breaks out. They are the first people to fight against rioters and they are most of the time also the first to die because their fighting power is not too high. The best way to deal with a riot to, is to avoid it in the first place from my own experience because seriously you don't really benefit from that too much. So we have by the way allocated 20 prisoners by now so our, our dungeon is quite full. As you see here, our people would lie, uh, would be uh, sentenced uh, by now, or we could just free them. I'm not going to free them, I'm just going to wait for the next slaver and enjoy that huge bump up in money. But we're going to put up some... We need to research that first. Yeah, we're going to uh, put up some scaffolds here. Because, you know, it is one way of ensuring that the, the law need of your people is fulfilled. And even by, while it might be quite grim, you know, this is a medieval game. And the medieval ages weren't exactly known for being too friendly. So I totally... Uh, totally uh, down, uh, double down on that. So the thing here is you don't uh, need to invest too hard into these things if you don't go too, uh, too deep down the slavery road. Overall, everything which inspires fear into your subjects is mostly necessary for uh, making sure that your slaves don't revolt. If you don't have any slaves in your colony, in your city in the larger uh, scale, you don't really need to use that too much. But I personally like to put up some scaffolds and some chopping blocks just to make sure that those gangsters out there know that we're in a meaning business here, you know? Besides that, it empties out the dungeons. We are already on half of our prisoner workload. And up here, you you really should monitor that. These guys are, if you don't want to do anything with them, a heavy source of income. Because you can really sell off slaves extremely uh, beneficial. So, let's amp up the pottery. And I was talking about farming. So, I want to remove the cotton farm as it is here. Because I, I want to reform the entire farm system into patches that are uniform. This might look a little bit boring at the first glance, but at the same time it makes organizing this entire system so much easier. There we go. Cotton farm, 14 people. Mostly I do like the system because it makes it easier for me to um, to understand how many people have to work there on each farm. Because sadly, and that's one thing I really would appreciate if it would get changed in the future versions of Songs of Six, you don't get a readout about the ideal amount of workers. So after this, this thing has been built, when you build a building, you see how many workers there there's ought to be uh, in there. But once they are completely built, these uh, numbers are not visible anymore, and that's a little bit sad, especially with the farms. My workaround is to have just uh, the the same size farms everywhere, so I know a farm is 14 people. That's my workaround. So, here are no nobility bonuses kicking in a little bit. I 
haven't fully understood why the nobility bonus is trickling upwards and not getting applied fully right from the get-go but like i said the nobility system is for me not entirely understood and look at that just by increasing the scaffold or by building the scaffolds our people are have grown a tad bit happier that's because our law um, fulfillment is increasing now we have a slaver in town now let's uh oh i forgot that i need to uh enslave them before i uh yeah sorry guys i messed up so we we have to actually enslave them of course to to sell them but we're going to um Why isn't that happening so far? Missing a tick. I could swear it's worked like that, but... So you see me here at a... Uh, at a confusion myself. I'm sorry about that. I don't quite understand why our prisoners are not being enslaved here, but maybe it was because the scaffolds were missing. Could be the case. Or we need to put up a proper trial to these. I'm not sure about that. I like this worked a little bit different the last time I was there. But we'll see about that. But as you see here, as soon as we put up the scaffolds, we have already a uh, depletion of these uh, of these criminals. Okay. So we have a new level from this point on, and I was hoping for this to happen in this episode. So, with a major title, we have now another noble to appoint. Let's do this right away. So, you of course can only assign only one title of nobility per person. And as you see here, you can select them twice, because that would be too OP, I guess. Now, our second pick here in this situation is a little bit hard to select. I personally love the refinery dude, because these are heavy-duty industries where you have really always a high pull. A farming master is always good, but I personally am very biased to go for the industry refinery or even the forge master. But we're going to roll with the refinery master because this will influence sectors which we all work with right now. We have bakeries, we have breweries, we have charcoalers, we have metal smelters, and we have weavers. So this is a fine pick for our situation right now. And this will increase the productivity of our city tremendously. So now we have that cotton farm here. And let's put that onto 13 employees. And that's the strange thing about farms. I could put it on 98, uh, 89 people there. And I, I really don't get it why. We're going to delete the old cotton farm here. So we get a better sized um, field here. And now we can just use the room copier to set this up doubly so this is these are the tools that i like to use for farming but here's the next thing farming has this irrigation thing irrigation is gained by having water tiles close to the farm so let's do this we're going to go over into this menu here and dig canal is what we're going to pick up so as you see here on under my cursor you have this little box water table this is giving you an information about how many water tiles you still have available to use. Water table is a kind of a strange um, wording for that, but basically once you run out of the, this number, you're not able to put down any water anymore until you pick up some water from elsewhere on the map. So basically, once you start removing water from somewhere, 
you get that water back to your water table amount. So basically, if you run into an area where you have zero water table available, you're running around in a dry area, and water is going to be an important and difficult to uh, fetch you know, to fetch resource. But in this regard, this is how it works to irrigate your fields. Not much, but it's pretty easily um, done. And I'm not irrigating these uh, these patches here because I want to to uh, have access to the fields still. My dudes uh, are supposed to access the fields this way, and we're going to pull streets through on every axis here to segment that thing. Keep in mind that your um, workers can't walk that well over water, so you should assign your um, your road systems accordingly. All in all, everybody wants to be at our city, as you see here. The immigrational pull is sick. We are a very happy town. Keep checking your crypts from time to time. If they are convoluted, you need more of them. And I really, really don't understand why my prisoners are not turned into slaves. Because we ain't have slavers, I guess. So, yeah, here we go. So, here, that's what I was missing. So that was a total lapse of my memory, I am quite sorry, but that's how it goes. We're going to put this up here as well. Let's put up a slaver here, because this is uh, how you how you make money with your, uh, with your um, imprisoned people. Oops, wrong button. So there's a small amount of metal involved, but we got that. All right, well, let's fetch ourselves some new trees and stones. Business as usual. And I can't wait to be uh, finally relieved from the duty to fetch my stones from the outside. Our stone mine is getting more and more powerful due to the nobility bonus, and the same applies to our other workshops here as well. And that's really cool to have these nobility bonuses trickling into your workshops, because this way you will have a easy way of amping up your production numbers without really investing anything uh, for real. Those no noble people, correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't found any particular deeper needs that they had or any change in their behavior, anything else I needed to do there. But like I said, I am not sure if I'm not missing something. So please fill in the blanks if I have any. This goes in general for this game because uh, Songs of Six is one crazy deep monster of a game. And as much as I love it for that, it also gives me the feeling that I have a hard time covering all the necess necessary topics properly at once. Well, well, such is life. So, as you see here, our grain, our overall grain amount is being depleted at this point. So, let's see if the irrigation bonus will kick in. And as you see here now, we have a 10-person production bonus via irrigation here. And the farms have the same calculation thingy, just like the mines and the like. You see here that we also have an irrigation bonus of 10% here. Pretty useful stuff, very easily applied, and uh, it really does do quite a lot. I'm not sure, though, if one patch on the top side would be enough to irrigate the entire field. I haven't experimented too much with that, but I'm also not that much of a min-maxer in general. I do a lot of my decisions to make things look nice, you know? Don't judge, it's just not like I have, like how I like to operate in general. So, our farming is doing nicely, and we've added in more people yet again. So, let's check out our service uh, table once more. So, well, we, we're really well set up here. People would love to have an arena, but be careful with the need of arenas, because that's just uh, very, very hard to fulfill, to put it into uh, friendly uh, words. 
most of the time your people want way more than you can accomplish there and we're now at a very very nice spot where we can grow safely and uh, carefully i really like that because this way we're allowed to move at a pace that we want to so don't get greedy with all the, the immigrants over there that's one of the biggest mistakes you could do by just grabbing all the people just because you can you won't do yourself any bigger favor with that okay so i want to increase our technology output by now it's all fine and dandy what we're doing right now but as we proceed further and further we need more and more things for our city so i want more knowledge i have just upgraded without saying it loudly the last of these libraries and my plan now is it is about time to stop the small numbers with that and just upgrade that in a larger scale so we're going to toss down a road here toss down a road there do some street planning like i said in this episode i really want to emphasize the structural um, parts of your city building as well also take some time and assign some streets your people they aren't dumb as you see here they will go for sneaky little paths like these roads are by no means a uh, a, a, a solid necessity to make movement possible in your city but i personally like to use roads as a ways and means to keep my city organized for me so that i can understand how the stuff's uh, going to work around here therefore we're going to add in a lot of dirt roads later when we're super filthy 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 rich we might be even assume uh thinking about some stone roads i mean the city is very rich in stone therefore i think it could be a very viable option by all means but for starters try to build roads always out of the most uh cheap material out there and that's none at all because your roads will need that material for repairs and stone roads have made a lot of uh, early uh, players broke because they underestimated the um, repair costs of these and that backstabbed them quite hard don't make that mistake for yourself so we're going to uh, put up like five more quarrymen here and that's because we want to amp up our industries next we have now workers food a steady influx of pretty much everything we need now it's about time to get that cash flow rolling to make sure that we always have the ore and the clay imported that we need and a steady surplus of money the slaver that we're setting up will help us in, in this regard as well i hope now the configurations ah finally so now we have those slaves over there so silly old me sorry i don't like it when that happens to me while i'm doing a tutorial series but after all this game is so deep that i forgive myself kindly and i'm pretty sure you guys are able to do so as well now we have slaves now and that's for us a good thing because once the next slaver hits town we can sell them off and every one of these bad boys is worth seven thousand coins so we're going to be in a very very rich status soon but that's the problem with slavery it's always just a small term influx of money and then it's gone so you really have to be careful with the relying on these things too much because it's a very uh it's a very very quickly gone thing speaking about very quickly gone as you see here our leather is also not really anymore stockpiling up like it did in the past i mean i'm still exporting lots 
but I'm going to stop exporting leather at this point. I'll rather transform it into armor and sell it off in this form because we'll get a lot more money out of that by now. Okay, so in the long run, our city will now expand into this direction with more housing. We have a huge sector available for that. And this little uh, strip in between here, we're going to use this for the sake of agriculture. And we're going to use some of these areas still for artisans uh, needs. So I'm not sure we're going to run if we're not going to run out of uh, fertile soil on this part of the map at some point, but that's not that much of a disaster. We can always build a bridge and expand our city. Of course, this will make us more vulnerable, but we could also seal ourselves off with a wall over here and have lush farms all the way over there. This would be an option, and I guess I will do this. So, yeah, city planning in between is a very, very important job, and I also think it's a lot of fun to do so, because I really love to optimize my spot a bit, and you're really enjoying the uh, extra bonuses if you do so correctly. So, we're going to expand our fishery here, because our our population loves fish, wildly we're going to just pick up the fishery here and expand it all the way over there and now we've hit the maximum expansion of one uh, of one building so we're going to leave it like that or i'm going to pick up this little deposit here and let's see there we go and let's leave that for the next one so we have 18 workers you know the drill Let's add in auxiliaries so our efficiency is back to max. And let's assign that. Always keep an eye out for your uh, stone and your tree. And yeah. Alright, so this episode was a lot of fun to do. And I think all in all, we are now at a spot where our next topic will be bumping up the economy like I said we're going to bump up research and we're going to move towards weapons production and military and a very very soon time in a very very um early no well I don't know it's hard for me to tell which uh, whether I'll go for um training soldiers first or going for the um, the uh, children first. We'll see about that. Feel free to leave me a comment about it. And we'll see which topic we'll solve at which time. But all in all, I'm very happy to see how things uh, went out here. So we have now the opportunity to put in 18 employees for the fishery. And that's that. So we have left this episode with two new noblemen we have amped up our food production we have restructurized our cotton production and we've amped up our fishing production and we still have services for everybody at a uh, acceptable rate that's some good success for <laughs> the sake of what i had in mind for this episode so next episode we're going to head into economy research and military soon tm and uh, I can't wait to get there. So drop me your comments down below. Leave me your thumbs up if you enjoyed. And of course, consider subscribing. There's daily content coming up from my side. I'd be delighted to have you. See you soon.